We had an unprecedented and historic event unfold in Southeast Florida on April 12th. I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas, and in this video, we're going to talk about it from a radar perspective and just how this one cell sat over the Fort Lauderdale area for about six hours, causing this historic and catastrophic flooding. In some places, amounted more than two feet of rain. I'm going to show you the official rainfall totals in, in a little bit as well. And then later on in the video, we're going to talk about how something like this could happen. Now, climate change did not cause this storm. It did not cause it to sit there either, but it does have its fingerprints on it. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about again towards the end of the video. Hey, before we get into this, hurricane season is right around the corner. If you want to stay updated, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Here we go. April 12th, 1030 in the morning near Fort Lauderdale. We have some light to moderate rain falling. That's the darker yellows and oranges. The darker the colors here, the more intense the rainfall. So there's nothing out of the ordinary going on until we really get to about lunchtime on April 12th. So here you go. You see the different colors start to change. The darker reds, oranges, indicating where we do have some of that heavy rain. This is kind of wave number one here of the extremely heavy rainfall that slides through. This lasts for a couple of hours. It starts to get really intense though as we move forward into the three to four o'clock hour. We're gonna stop it at 3.30 and we have a developing supercell north of Miami, south of Fort Lauderdale. Here is Fort Lauderdale, you see the darker reds and then this iconic little hook. We're gonna get into some of the tornado reports but there were this storm that not only caused this catastrophic flooding also went on to produce a couple of tornadoes. So you saw that, again, that hook echo. There's our supercell. I'm going to let this ride for a second. I'm going to play this. And look how it just sits there and kind of spins like a top over the Fort Lauderdale area. So again, it started at about 3 to 4 o'clock, and we're still rolling now until about 8, 9 o'clock at night. There's 8.57. Look how heavy this rain is. Again, the darker the red and purple the more intense the rainfall. Still continuing to hang out over the Fort Lauderdale area. And then not moving for the next few hours until finally dissipating around 1130. I'm going to let this loop kind of play through without pausing it so you can just see this system spin there. Again, there is that wave number one of the rain early in the day, early in the afternoon. And then you see this little supercell pop up, kind of slide up from the south and just sit there and then not move all afternoon, all evening long, and it just rained. And most of the rainfall that I'm going to show you, the official amounts that came in, occurred from about 3 o'clock until about 10 o'clock at night. You see there, look at this, it's 9 o'clock at night. We're still talking about that same cell sitting there before it kind of peters out. These are official amounts. They'll become official, but these were what were actually measured here. In Fort Lauderdale, 25 inches of rain, nearly 26. It's more than 2 feet of rain in a 24-hour period. Now, I also want to let you know that, again, 24 hours there is, is kept for nice, neat, meteorological bookkeeping records. A lot of that fell in about six-ish hours, making this even more impressive. Hollywood, Florida, picked up 18 inches of rain. Plantation, about 15 inches. And in Port Everglades, closing in on a foot. So when I say historic, I mean historic. And here's more fuel to that fire. Of course, we all know that we get a lot of rain when we get impacted by hurricanes, tropical storms in the state of Florida. We broke a record. If this number does go official, which it likely will, of picking up 25.91 inches of rain in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, so look at this. Key West currently holds the record for the highest 24-hour rainfall for highest rainfall in a 24-hour period of 23.28 inches. That fell with Hurricane Jean back in November of 1980. There was another Hurricane Jean as well. Jean seemed to like Florida. But we smashed a record for the state. What is 24-hour period in all likelihood from a non-tropical system? Again, that makes what happened on April 12th in and around the Fort Lauderdale area so impressive and so historic. All right, so here is the main meteorological setup. We had this big area of low pressure in the northern Gulf of Mexico, just kind of chilling right here. Now, what this did for Florida, you see that kind of green color draped over the state? That is the amount of moisture 
in the atmosphere. With that counterclockwise flow around that area of high pressure, it was just pulling all of this tropical moisture up from the Caribbean and from the Southwest Atlantic and just focusing in it, focusing all that moisture on the state of Florida. We ignited the sea breeze with the heating of the day. We've got those storms to develop. And then because the flow was so strong in the mid-levels of the atmosphere as those storms fired up along that sea breeze, they couldn't move. They were literally held back there and just were able to rain and rain in rain until they kind of petered themselves out late into the evening. Now, I mentioned about climate change. It has its fingerprints on it. Again, that storm would have been there anyway, even with a warming climate. That setup would have been there anyway, even with a warmer climate. Where climate change comes into play, and I always caution this, again, it's important to know that you can't pin any single one weather event on climate change. However, Climate change does make events like this occur on a more common scale. What used to happen once every X amount of years now happens a little more frequently. And we did have that extra moisture in our atmosphere when you have a warming planet. When you have warmer air, it can hold more moisture. So there was more moisture in the atmosphere for those storms and for that lone supercell to play with and take advantage of really increasing those rainfall rates. So again, I want to be clear here, climate change didn't cause the storm. It didn't cause that setup with that low in the northern gulf, but there was more moisture in the atmosphere for that storm to play with and what helped make this event so historic and so catastrophic that, of course, Southeast Florida is no stranger to tropical weather, and it smashed records from all of those hurricanes in a 24-hour period, again, in that 24-hour stretch. To add insult to injury, there were also two tornado touchdowns. They were brief, they were weak, but nonetheless, they touched the ground in and around Hollywood and Fort Lauderdale. You see that there. Those are the official tornado reports coming in from the National Weather Service survey teams on April 12th. Just insane stuff, again, going on in South Florida on April 12th. Again, that lone supercell that just really wrung out all of that moisture in the atmosphere and just pounded the Fort Lauderdale area, Broward County, with a lot of heavy rain. It's going to take a long time again for that, uh, for some of those areas to recover from all that flooding that, again, that, that some people that live there say they've never seen before and they've gone through hurricanes and have been there since the 60s. So just some insane stuff. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, if you found this informative, please give this a th thumbs up. And if you do love weather content, Please hit subscribe and we will catch you next time.